Yeah, I'm recording. You're recording? I'm recording. Oh, thank, thanks, Rito. Can you record to the end? I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. All right, all right. Okay, so we just started. Um, welcome, everyone, to the IPFS Howlands September 4th. Um, today is Labor Day in Labor's Day in the U.S., so we might see less faces as than usual. Uh, but nevertheless, the room seems pretty full, and I see that we have a demo here and a bunch of agenda items. Excited! Um, we have run in the past all ends, the past couple of ends. Like it's just a quick update. Like everyone would share what they are doing, but since we have so many agenda items, it might be more valuable to actually go to the agenda first. And then if people want to share something extra or ask some questions, we, we use the time if we have time left. Sounds good? All right. Um, by the way, Lars is our uh, amazing old taker for the day. Thank you so much, Lars. <laughs> cool. So first item actually was added by me. Um, just like a a simple update, but that got me very excited today. I, I went to the multi-format organization and I started like just like going through all the repos and like seeing how many languages we had available there. And, and I realized that like, although we have repos in many languages, we only had team for Python, JavaScript and Go. So what I did was like I started creating the teams for every language and adding the people that contributed to those packages to those teams so that they get like full access to contribute to those packages as it should be. Um, and when I finished, I realized, oh my God, we actually have like 14 teams, 14 languages. We multi-format is like from all of the um, IPFS, the peer-to-peer, -peer, IPLV and multi-format uh, projects. It is like the one that people adopt the fastest because it's like super useful, like multi-ash, multi-other, and so on. And now people can use it um, across 14 languages. We do need to update the table on the readme, but nevertheless, like this is super exciting. And thank you for everyone that's has been contributing. So, yeah, okay, so this is the, the simple update. Let's go to the next one, if I don't see any hands. Yes, IPFS has no support for Git. So I don't know if Lucas is here. Magic. No, okay, he's not here. Um, no problem. So basically, Lucas, uh, Magic 6K has developed over the weekend and pushed a pull request to add support for Git's traversal uh, through the VEG API in Yes, IPFS. So if you have been using Git um, in GoIPFS or if you've been using GoIPFS to traverse Git graphs, you now can do that in JSIPFS as well. You do need to use JSIPFS master, um, but uh, it will be released on the next version of uh, IPFS, which is the next item I also have on this list, um, which is JSIPFS 026 is coming. Uh, I hope to release it this week. It brings some cool stuff. Steven, I, I think you have your mic on, or at least like we hear the noises. <laughs> no problem. Uh, so like the, there is an issue. I'll post it here in the notes. Um, the, this this release will bring a lot of like a big form perf improvements, uh, and I don't know if like Frida will want to talk about that. Um, and and it will bring the gateway also to JSAPFS. So you'll be able to use the JSAPFS node as a gateway node as well, which uh, I'm also looking forward to get some gateway nodes using JSIPFS, as I talked with Lars and Victor, um, so that we also get the metrics and the monitoring that we get for GoIPFS. And yeah, there is more highlights. Um, as I, as you know, I always create an issue with like what is coming, uh, what are the new cool features. You can check that issue on JSIPFS repo. It is the issue 986. Yeah. I'm expanding it during this week because there is way more stuff than what is listed uh, there. Cool. If no one has any questions, I'll jump into the next item, which is IPFS in Mexico. Herman, do you want to give us an update? Well, uh, we did with Microsoft and consensus a uh, hackathon of two days into Latin Mexico. And, and well, the, 
the thing was to see the state of the art of the developers and companies, the interest on the blockchain. And uh, most of the cases, not all needed documents, need a lot of data to be stored. So somebody approached to me shyly and what about IPFS? Can I use this instead of S3? And then in all the other tables, I saw that people at least knew IPFS of name or they were using it for music or whatever projects. I was surprised that in my region, Latin America, uh, blockchain and IPFS have finally entered the mainstream. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Like if there is, like, so it was an hackathon. So I guess there was projects coming out of the hackathon. If you want to list those projects on the notes, um, like it would be awesome for everyone to be able to check it out. Okay. Yeah. Also let them know that we have these calls. Like they are more than welcome to join us and chat and like, again, ask questions and participate. Cool, thank you so much. Uh, next item is also related with events and community. And uh, this time it is Dimitri with Costa Rica. So not in as exciting as that. I'm just, just starting to um, get a few people together and maybe run a, a first hackathon and just reaching out to friends and, and people that I know in the industry and kind of getting the voice out. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll update everyone when, when the hackathon runs and I get some feedback and see where we're at here. Awesome, that is exciting. Uh, if you if you if you want or if you can like you can create an issue on IPFS community. That's like mm -hmm. typically how meetups in other cities that other cities have started. Okay. People just create an issue, like then we tweet about it. Uh, we see if we know more people that are on the area that might be interested in helping out or just like participating. Uh, awesome. And typically, a good group is formed and then a meetup happens. Awesome, perfect. I'll do that. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you so much. That's exciting. Um, okay, so next item on the agenda is IPFS Python implementation. And there is Dhruv. Am I saying your name right, Dhruv? Uh, it's actually Dhruv. Dhruv, uh, okay, got it. Very, very <laughs> to pronounce. Hey guys, uh, my first PM call, I Welcome. you guys, uh, thank you. Uh, via the GitHub channel and uh, I, I've been playing with IPFS over the last few months and uh, trying to get a hang of it. I checked it once a couple of years back, uh, but I think to have uh, nice applications building on top of it, I don't sort of like the HTTP API, so I'll you know, probably help in implementing a Python port of IPFS and see where that goes. And thanks for, uh, David, especially thanks for your uh, guidance and pointers in making that happen. Over the weekend, I implemented multi-base and multi-codec uh, in Python. And I'll move on to CID next. That's pretty cool. Yeah, um, you are more than welcome to ask questions and I like, keep pinging me to for directions. I know that like our specs need to be updated. So if you like need to understand a little, like as you go more parts, just ping me on issues and I'll make sure to follow up. Yeah. Lars? Uh, what did you say? What you implemented? Multi-base and multi-codec? Yeah. Yeah, okay, awesome. Also, uh, I'll be the IRC channel as well. I'm on the IRC channel, so I'll just ping you guys over there. <laughs> nice. Uh, if you don't mind to add the links to the, the implementations you made to the the, um, the call notes, the, yeah, of the course. Pad, that would be useful. Yeah, for sure. That's cool. All right. So if there are no more topics, we will jump into the demos. It seems there is no end. So, okay, let's go to demos. The first demo is IPFS Companion by Lidl. Lidl. Hi, I'm Machinata, also known as uh, Lido, or Lido, well, depends <laughs> on your pronunciation. Um, and this is a small pet project uh, I started in uh, 2015, and it was only uh, Firefox. Uh, it was Firefox only, 
uh, but since then Mozilla decided uh, that they deprecate uh, legacy SDK, uh, Zool based uh, SDK, and they uh, pushed uh, quite hard uh, towards uh, web uh, extension APIs. And what I'll be showing you right now, maybe I'll show you the screen. Uh, Can you see it? Let me know if you can see it. <laughs> we can see it. All right. Uh, yeah. So uh, what I got here is a quick demo uh, of uh, having the, the same uh, uh, browser extension uh, working in two browsers. I got the latest uh, Chromium. I don't, I'm not sure if it's the latest, but it's the latest that I was able to install and uh, the uh, current uh, Firefox. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, right now I don't have uh, IPFS uh, daemon in the background. Maybe I should uh, preface this by uh, telling you uh, quickly about uh, this uh, extension. What this extension does, it uh, started as a quick way to redirect uh, requests to uh, public IPFS uh, resources, mostly on the IPFS IO uh, public gateway, uh, to redirect uh, all requests to such public gateway to your locally running uh, uh, Go IPFS uh, daemon. And since then, we've added some uh, additional features. Um, so uh, let's quickly uh, install it in both browsers. It's easier to show than to. Yeah, so we were successful uh, in um, publishing to the uh, Chrome Web Store. Uh, you can find it as uh, IPFS companion. You just install it. And that's all. You can see in the bottom right uh, corner, there's notification that IP, IPFS API is offline. That is because I've shut down my local daemon before this presentation. And let's uh, go to the Firefox. Uh, under Firefox, uh, there is a small issue that we still are, uh, the uh, officially published version is the legacy one. Uh, Mozilla generally, uh, is more strict or maybe they uh, uh, value security more and the review process is uh, quite harder than uh, the one on the Chrome market. Uh, that is why our um, web extension version is still in development channel, but we hope to get it uh, promoted to the officially reviewed version uh, soon. Uh, <laughs> hopefully before Firefox 57 arrives, uh, which will stop supporting legacy add-ons. But for now, you just uh, go to, to this page and go to developer channel, there's the link, or you can go here and install the latest uh, version from developer channel. And if you install, you can see you've also got notification that the API is offline and both browsers got this browser action. And when the uh, daemon is offline, there's not much there. You can only open preferences and maybe I resize it. Yeah. So uh, you can uh, go to preferences and customize a list of known public gateways. Uh, right now we've got a static list because things like uh, automatic uh, recognition of uh, DNS links uh, is still experimental. It slows down, uh, it slows down the browser, so it's, um, it's disabled by default. Uh, but feel free to experiment with it. And that's about it when it comes to uh, configuration. Mm. And if we start IPFS uh, daemon, you can see both browsers display uh, current uh, 
hearing information. And we've got additional uh, options such as uh, opening web UI. Uh, from this point, I think I'll close uh, Chrome because it looks the same mm, in both browsers. And the quick de uh, demo would be you can open uh, web UI from this interface, of course. Um, you can, on any page uh, that you visit, you can right click on images or videos and you can directly uh, from this interface upload it to IPFS. And you can see here it's uh, mirrored to your local uh, node. And when you are uh, browsing, when you are on the IPFS resource, uh, this uh, browser action menu has additional uh, free items. You can copy a canonical address. Uh, this address is just uh, our IPFS path. You can copy uh, public gateway URL. And that's the something you can share to uh, someone who does not have uh, no running. And uh, you can pin or unpin uh, um, IPFS resource. Right now, it's, if I'm not mistaken, it's uh, pinning uh, recursively. Um, so if you pin directory, it probably will pin all its uh, children and subdirectories. And if you upload anything, uh, let's say I'll save this here. And then if I, uh, yeah, so this is the feature that enables you to upload a file from your disk, quick upload. And you can uh, just uh, upload the same image and you get the same hash. Uh, so uh, that's uh, uh, the gist of this uh, functionality um, and uh, what's, uh, what's planned in the future is to, uh, of course, uh, work uh, to integrate uh, JS IPFS so that we do not need to run local uh, IPFS uh, daemon. Uh, I know David uh, was working on uh, service worker and things like that. Uh, that's a great, uh, great effort toward that goal. Uh, we also um, got regression, uh, this migration to um, uh, web extension APIs cost uh, uh, functionality regression uh, specific to protocol handlers. We no longer can support uh, FS, uh, uh, or IPFS protocols uh, as uh, first class citizens. Uh, what we are able to uh, uh, support under uh, Firefox is uh, uh, protocol prefix, uh, prefixed uh, by Web Plus. Um, and uh, I think uh, that's uh, two main uh, pain points uh, right now. Uh, I encourage everyone to uh, check uh, our uh, GitHub repository. There's a um, quick uh, contributing page that uh, should be, uh, should make it easy to play with it uh, under uh, Firefox or Chrome. And I think that's all on my end. Uh, of course, we've got uh, a lot of issues and there's also uh, uh, this label help wanted. It's uh, something you can provide feedback or maybe uh, work uh, as a standalone uh, pull request. Uh, yeah, I think that's all on my end. Um, are there any questions? This is a super cool demo and a super cool project. <laughs> it's funny that you call it like a side project that, I, that I've been doing since 2015, but like, there's a lot of work here. And, and thanks to this project, we actually discovered some of the browser obstacles 
that we need to um, overcome in order to actually get IPFS, either through IPFS or just IPFS supported in a browser in a way that users don't have to worry about it. So yeah, thank you so much for like continuously and pushing this effort forward. Um, it looks super cool. I was checking the the nodes, the swarm counter there, like it's already 392 connections. It's like, oh my God, just goes up. This doesn't stop gathering more and more connections. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> some, something I forgot uh, to uh, to mention, uh, I've got uh, the back of my head uh, that uh, Edge from Microsoft and uh, Opera also uh, support mm -hmm. uh, web extensions, so we probably uh, should create tickets uh, to see, maybe it just works. <laughs> if we've got uh, it working with Chrome, I think uh, the most of the work is already done. Mm -hmm. So that's something. Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah let, let's try it on. Um, yeah, it's uh, one more reason to make sure that the IPFS works well on Windows. Uh, yeah. I see a hand. Yeah, Gabriel. there's a hand. <laughs> hey, everyone, uh, th thanks a lot for that demo. It's really cool. Um, I have a little bit of good news in terms of our um, issues with unsafe eval. I was finally managed to track down one of the reasons why there is unsafe eval in our uh, IPFS API dependencies. Turns out uh, protocol buffers is the, the culprit here, which uses unsafe eval to generate code. Um, I knew about that package, I just didn't knew that we were actually using that uh, JSA BFS API. Uh, so we will have to figure out a way around this. Um, yeah, yeah I mean, I, because, yeah, go ahead. No, sorry. Uh, yeah, I, I, I was uh, experimenting a little bit and <laughs> seen, uh, I, I've seen various uh, ways uh, people try to sandbox the uh, Eval stuff into iframes. Uh, it's just a mess. Yeah, we, we, so I think the, the good solution here is make sure our dependencies do not use Eval. It's just, it's not a good practice. It's, opens us up for risks uh, that we don't want to necessarily take. Um, and there's really nothing today anymore in, in browsers that that usually requires to use eval. Um, yeah, I, 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 yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, I, I, I seem to get uh, some kind of uh, delay. Uh, anyway, uh, the, the, the problem with eval and uh, Mozilla is that uh, uh, from what I've been told is that uh, if uh, you submit an uh, extension and uh, this extension is uh, validated by some automated tools and if they detect that your extension got uh, eval or other uh, red flags, they just put uh, your extension in a slow lane and the review can take uh, weeks instead of days. Mm, so that's, yeah. uh, that's quite painful, yeah. That's, that's very unfortunate, yeah. Um, is there is there a good way to detect all the usages? Because currently I've just been manually trying to figure, looking through the searching through the minified files. Do you have like found a tool that easily checks the files for where there are actually usages of this? Um, when I was debugging, I think uh, the best. Uh, mm, the uh, Chrome, uh, Chrome uh, was the um, browser that gave me a better uh, insight uh, into where uh, Eval is located. Okay. Uh, um, you can try loading, uh, building, uh, going to the um, Git repo, going to the contribu uh, contribution uh, page, and building it uh, and loading into uh, the Chrome. And the yeah. Chrome got, got this uh, feature that it's, uh, it can uh, uh, un-minify uh, sources. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, I, I was not able to find anything better than that. So All right. Yeah, that, that's, that's something. Um, mm -hmm. Thanks. Any other questions? Awesome. Okay. Thank you so much for the demo. Uh, super cool. Cool. So we have one more demo. Uh, and, and yeah, we still have a lot of time. So after the demo, if people want to discuss something that they've been working on, please do. Um, make sure to 
remind us. Uh, so the next demo is leap here, peer circuit, and although it doesn't have a name, I'm guessing that's Dimitri. Yep, sure about that. Should have <laughs> added my name there. Um, no problem. Go for it. Take it away. Sure. Uh, let me share my screen. All right. Can you guys see it? Awesome. We can. Thanks. So um, I guess I'll I'll just mention what um, Libby to be circuit is first. Uh, basically, it's a way of uh, just relaying connections between nodes. Uh, if two nodes can't communicate with each other, they uh, for some reason they use a third node to um, serve as a relay to. Um, to basically show data around, or however you want to call it. Um, and this this demo is basically Node.js, uh, IPFS nodes with Go IPFS nodes uh, communicating over a JS relay. Uh, so, and basically, and the browser as well. So browser to, browser over a Node.js uh, relay to go nodes uh, back and forth. So we're going to start the Node.js uh, relay. And the go node as well. Um, this is obviously the file transfer um, example. And what I'm going to do is add a file into the browser. In, oh, sorry. First. And as you can see, um, when the node starts, it, it prints out its, its P2P circuit address, which is, um, which is this thing. And in order for me to be able to use, um, to basically, Right now, you can't um, fetch files from a uh, Go node uh, from the browser, and with the with the relay, it should be possible. So I have this file here. Now I need to connect the nodes to the relay. Uh, the first one I'm going to try to connect is. the browser node, and I'm going to connect it over a web sockets. So pasting the address here. Now it's connected. It's connected to the relay. Now I'm going to, um, oh yeah, let's see if I can. Show the peers that are connected to uh, to this relay. So yeah, uh, oops, sorry. The uh, the node, the browser node, is now connected to this relay. Um, now I'm going to try to connect the the go node. And just to make sure that we don't have anything connected. I'm first going to connect it to the relay, and then connect the go node to the browser. Right. So we have both node connected to uh, this relay here. And as you can see, it will try to detect if it's a hope node. And if it's a hope node, it's going to add it to its internal list. Um, now let's connect the browser, or let's connect the uh, go node to the browser. And use this address right here. And 
right? And it's connected. Here are both gears. This is the Go node, by the way. This is the browser node, again. And this is the, the relay. And now I'm gonna try to fetch this image from, um, from the browser. And uh, here's the image. That is so nice. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that is very cool. That's really nice. Yeah. Awesome. Three. It works, nice. works the other way as well, so I can show it because, but yeah, it does work the other way. And go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, it was super cool that you dialed from Go to the browser and not the other way around. Um, and also the that yeah like it was instantaneous like uh, yeah. it didn't take time at all like as soon as you said dial it appeared on the browser that it was connected yep it is pretty fast yeah yep yeah can can you show the 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 peers in the browser i also yeah, saw the, that one yeah, yeah when you connected yeah. whoops uh, yeah. if you open that web page dimitri uh sure. absolutely there you go. yep so this two um uh, this one is the relay and this one is the uh Relayed. Yeah, the relayed note. Yep. Uh, something is weird there. Like yeah, it's six thousand and one, and there is no. I guess like it's missing the slash peer to peer circuit slash IPFS, right? Well, these are. Um, so it just displays the uh, whatever uh, whatever address it finds. I think it's the first one. Yeah, but the, but the address is incorrect. It has a port number and then an IPFS ID. There's like a, a bug there. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah, I see it now. Yeah. Thanks for pointing that. I I missed it. Mm, that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But it does work, so it can't be that yeah. bad, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I can't believe I missed it. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Uh, yeah, it should be simple to solve some concatenation yeah, somewhere. It's probably a concatenation. Yeah. Pretty good. Pretty yeah. cool. That's, yeah. That's pretty speed. And like, this is the Galaxy FS nodes we relay that Viso has been working on, right? Yeah, that's the that's Viso's um, um, Go implementation with my JS implementation, working over a JS uh, node. Mm -hmm. I haven't been able to get the browser connected, and I'm not sure this this might be something with Go itself uh, that I might not be aware of. Uh, but you is the uh, WebSocket implementation functional in Go, or is it uh, not so much? Because I'm not able to connect from the browser to Go now. Uh, Did you sockets. check the IPFS config? So like Go IPFS does support WebSockets and that's how the browser connects to the bootstrappers. Mm -hmm. Have you checked the IPFS config of your Go nodes to make sure that there is an IP uh, WebSockets smoothie other there? Yeah, yeah. Um, yep. I can show you. Um, what, uh, what version of Go, are you running against Go IPFS master? Or yeah, are you that's, running against that's, release? That is master. Yeah. So like there is no there is no WebSockets there. Oh. Uh, this one, yes. I had another one that had WebSockets and it wasn't working. Um, it might be. I just cleaned this up for this demo because I, I I tried making it work yesterday, but it, I couldn't get it to work with the WebSockets. So I and I just cleaned everything up and started over. Um, okay. Could this you one here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Could you try? Uh, WebSockets don't support zero zero, do they? Oh, oh, they oh, they do they, they do in Go. Never mind. Um, could you try testing this against the latest IPFS Go IPFS releases, the latest mm -hmm. two basically? And if sure. those work and Master doesn't, please file an issue, um, oh, mm -hmm. and we'll look into it because we did upgrade WebSockets eventually somewhere on the line, and mm -hmm. that I would see. mean that we broke something. I see. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I was, I was basically what I was getting was a 403 in the browser. And apparently from the, um, uh, from the node, 
from the command line node, or not, not, not the browser one. It, it did work, but not from the browser. Anyways, I'll, um, I'll check it out against the, the latest release, and uh, I'll file an issue if, it's, if it works. Thanks. Um, cool. All right. Um, so are there any questions here? Seems not. Um, thank you so much for the demo. This was pretty cool. Uh, like, let's figure out what is the situation with the WebSockets in Go, and also try to do the demo with Go as a relay. Uh, and yeah, like um, just like listing the, the the pull request, the top level one, what is missing. I know that like you have some ideas for more testing mm -hmm. and uh, there are some things that you're still polishing. So like just keep us updated so that we make sure that like we review things on time so yep. that we can merge it as fast as possible. Yep. Absolutely. Very excited All right. for this release. Yeah. Yeah. It has been a long coming one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, cool. All right. So let me check the agenda. Uh, zoom just took over my screen. There is large files in the browser. I've got no, one more demo if you want to see it. It's not as exciting as the two ones before me, I'm afraid. But I can't show not, you. We don't know when. We don't know when. <laughs> but, but I can show you a working version of adding a large file in the browser to JSIPFS without the browser dying, which I find reasonably exciting. Yeah, uh, go for it, go for it, show uh, us. Let me share my screen, there we go. Uh, okay. Share screen. All right, um, please ignore the 500. Um, errors and connecting to the bootstrappers. That's just a build I have. All right, let's start this. All right, we've got the running. Yeah, the remote peers are not fully working, but we can still have files. So let's start with, oh, you don't see that, right? Mm. There we go. Now you can see. No, that's wrong. There we go. Okay, because the interesting part is the file sizes here. It's kind of interesting if you can't see them. Uh, so I've got a couple of image uh, DMG files lying around here that I found on my machine. So the smallest one is Google Chrome. So let's start with that one. Uh, yeah, we, we currently, the, there is no progress support currently because that's coming soon, hopefully. Do you want to explain why this is exciting and like what was the issue yeah, before so, and so, what is fixed now? So let me explain while this is adding um, what's, what the issue was before. So there was an issue on JCIPFS which says, um, oh yeah, we're already done. Um, so I'd probably get better start when the, the, the bigger one in the background. Let's add the 100 megs. All right, so the interesting thing here is we had an issue where Chrome would, or any other browser for that matter would just crash if you started adding large files and it also was seen as very, very slow. Um, and uh, so I took a look at that and eventually was able to figure out the various issues we had that, that resulted in this happening. The first one was that um, our uh, browser version of AES in counter encryption was allocating a lot of buffers when doing encryption in counter mode, which was not very productive and ended up generating a lot of GC calls basically. So this was already this is already done. That's a hundred megs. Um and that made the JavaScript just very, very slow and when when this was especially when things were going over the wire, because that's why we do that in encryption. Um, the other thing uh, that here was a major issue was that the original code was using uh, regular node streams and a, a particularly interesting module which is wrapped a, a big file into a kind of stream and buffering them, buffering it, and then sending that as a node stream to the JSIPFS 
uh, node stream API and then adding it to JSIPFS. And so when I did benchmarks of what I ended up having is, let's see if I have the screenshot, it was just basically showing me, that's the wrong one. Uh, there we go. So we're basically showing me this. Um, and, and copy is a buffer operation uh, called by send data and um, from object and from object then concat effectively also both end up being called from buffer operations and most of these were just being called because we were just buffering things way over and so it would copy all the data tons of times through through and through and it would just run out of time to do things <laughs> um, and so it would just crash eventually or just become very very slow uh, and now I've refactored the code to just use pull streams pulling directly the data from this kind of stream that the, the file reader API provides from the browser directly into JSIPFS. And as you've seen, um, it's working pretty nicely now. That's super cool. Uh, do we have an estimate when Browserify AES gets released? Because I know like they merged the PR, but they've been pretty silent about the release, I guess. Okay, should we send an email? Like they, they have like five uh, owners. We just need uh, one to publish. <laughs> do they on NPM actually? Yeah, like one of them is Feather. So I can ping Feather. Let me check. And the other I think is Dominic. I think we also can ping Dominic. Is Dominic an owner? Yeah, though I've, I haven't seen Dominic active in recently. So I don't know if he's what's online currently. Uh, yeah, it's ping, let's ping people and just see what happens. Um, we, we should get a, yeah, we definitely yeah I mean, the latest release is experience. two years ago, it was two years ago. That's like, there's a lot of stuff not released. <laughs> like a lot. Well, um, okay. So let's definitely ping them through IRC and, and later in the week through email if, if they don't reply. Um, we want to have this released for the next release of JSIPFS. Yeah. Um, um, the thing is, yeah, we might have we have, might have to still pull it manually ourselves <laughs> because um, this is pulled in through Webpack and Browserify. So depending on their version declarations, even the release there is not enough for us. Same thing as we have with Browserify Zlib. Oh my, <laughs> again, <laughs> this is again. happening again. <laughs> but the good news is um, I now have, I, I can I can get a browser if I release to help if we need to. Um, I'm not sure about Webpack. Um, I am a maintainer of browser if I, it seems now, for Sweet. some reason, <laughs> <laughs> at least on GitHub. Um, so I can ping people there definitely to make a release happen. Um, I don't know about the Webpack side, but Webpack releases regularly, so it should not be that hard to figure something out, hopefully. Sounds good. Yeah, let's definitely follow up on the notes of this call um, and like ping people and like let's try to get all of that this week if possible. Um, yeah, cool, awesome, three demos today. And this was a big day. Um, and it's an holiday in the US, so <laughs> imagine next week. Is there any other thing that people would like to discuss? We still have 11 minutes. I can also end the meeting now and go hack on stuff. All right, seems we are done. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, this was fun. Uh, thank you for the demos, Lydell, Dimitri, Friedel. Uh, thank you for taking notes, Lars. Uh, yeah, thank you everyone for joining. Cool, thank have you, a great everyone. week. See you awesome next Monday. <laughs> thank you guys. See you guys.